This week's video is brought to you by Magic Spoon. Do you love cereal but avoid it because of all that sugar? Are you looking for a delicious, healthy snack to add to your routine? Magic Spoon is a cereal reinvented. Their variety pack comes with four delicious flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. I found my new midnight snack. Magic Spoon cereals have zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, like and only four net cereals. grams of carbs in each serving, along with only 140 calories per serving. They're also keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, They'll refund your money, no questions asked. Click my link below in the description and use the code REDPOPPYRANCH at checkout to get $5 off of your order. What flavor will you try? Reed, what? I'm going to teach you a life skill that hopefully you never need, but like your father, it'll be good to have. Oh no! Do I win? <laughs> Wait, what was the sk skill you were gonna teach me? The snow has now melted enough that I really want to try and see if I can get up to our little off-grid cabin. I want to see if I can get up there. I couldn't get up there in the side-by-side, -side, so I'm going to try with the snow machine. <laughs> Bye. I just rode the snow machines up here to the cabin. I haven't been up here in probably, oh, at least, I don't even know, at least three months. I wanna give it a quick once over and make sure everything's okay. And then figure out when I'm gonna get up here and start doing some work. I set that wood like that in November, thinking I would be right back up here to do the back of the, Kevin, haven't been back since. So I guess maybe I'll just bring the snow machine up here until all the snow's gone because I really want to get this place finished up. Um, what's unfortunate is if I had bought the tongue and groove last fall before everything went crazy i probably would have paid half of what i'm going to pay for it now but i do have all the board and batten up here man i i always love it up here uh i'm, I'm definitely going to spend more time up here this summer that's for sure
today's the day we're finally getting new furniture and so we've had this couch for what 10 years so we're excited to get rid of it we have a lot of memories on this thing but it's time for it to go it's not that it's heavy, it's just the high back on it is awkward. awkward. As our house gets closer and closer to being finished, Cedar and I both want to put some final touches on it that genuinely makes the house our very own. One of the ways that we've decided to do this is get rid of some of the older furniture that we've had and replace it with new stuff that's, again, never been used by anybody else. Over the last year and a half, we've looked at furniture a number of times. We finally went down to a local place, agreed on something that we both liked that seemed to be pretty durable, knowing that between the kids and the dogs, the new couches would get used, and we bought them. They had the love seat and the recliner in stock. The sofa was supposed to be here about a week ago. When we got down to the store to pick things up, they informed us that the sofa was on a boat somewhere near the Suez Canal, and it could be as much as another month before we see it. We brought what we had back to the ranch. So for the next month, we might have to sit a little bit closer together as a family than we have over the last 10 years. But hopefully soon enough, our new sofa shows up. Drop the tire. On a side note, we tried to take our old couch that was still in very good condition to two different thrift stores, and both of them said they just didn't have a place to put it. We reached out to a few friends, and again, it was a little bit too big for most people. Unfortunately, the sectional that we've had for 10 years ended up in the landfill. This was the last place that we wanted it to go. Like Cedar's new Jeep, this again is the first time we've had brand new furniture in our married life. Cedar has learned to make her decor work with the antiques that I love so much, but I can tell she's already ecstatic to have new couches. At least I'm not sunk down to my ankles like the other couch. This is, I love you, but this is really the one I'm wanting, I know. wanting to try out right here. Oh my gosh. I'm going to be asleep in this thing. We had five babies and I never once had a rock. Now that we're done with babies. So we got our new furniture. We got the love seat and the recliner. We're still waiting for the sofa and they said it could be a couple weeks. So we're just... Doing what, making do with what we have. 
What do you think? Ah, Ruby. I knew it. <laughs> Cedar has gone to the airport to pick up her parents that are going to be here with us for the weekend. So this is how I cook lunch for the kids. A little bit of leftover carne asada taco meat from the night before, and some cheese and corn tortillas, and we're good to go. Quesadilla tacos. Is it weird with your dad wearing a GoPro in the kitchen? No. I replaced both of the coils and the cartridges associated with the drive motors on the skid steer. And while it again runs better, there's still something going on. The more I drive it and the more I play around with it, the more it seems like it could be something electrical. But when I do run it, it always starts and runs perfectly. But regardless of how long it's been running, the second I turn it off, turn it back on, the hydraulic pressure from the drive motors drops from about 275 PSI to under 100 PSI. And the skid steer is now stuck wherever it happens to be until it decides to go back to normal, which typically takes 24 hours. I think I'm gonna haul it into town and have a friend look at it and see if we can't officially determine what's wrong. And then I'll make some decisions on where I'm gonna go from there. One of the many projects that I need to get done this summer will be a process of replacing old fencing with new fencing, but also a process of installing new fence, cutting off portions of our property into individual pastures where we can move the goat herd around, allowing them to free range and eat down the grass and weeds over the summer while the grass and weeds are growing.
but one of the biggest issues is keeping the goats contained using the right fencing. And I think we finally found it. This is one of my favorite trees on our property. This is an heirloom Potawatomi plum tree. I, I don't know how old this tree is, I would guess. Maybe, maybe 40 to 50 years old, I'm not sure. But we had three of these original plum trees on the lower portion of our property when we first purchased it. And this is the only one that lasted. The other two were in the way of something. If I recall correctly, basically where the house is, one of them, the biggest one that we had, had to be removed. And then we had one over here that I think uh, the septic system um, required that I take it out. I have since gone and planted these Potawatomi, uh, the little small Potawatomi plum trees that I find. I would occasionally find them kind of scattered throughout our property. And what I found when I looked up these trees and I tried to find out just in fact what they were, I found a uh, major connection to a pioneer heritage. Um, I also found that they are again an heirloom tree, but that there's no longer a commercial value. So I don't, I don't know if you can go and buy one of these trees uh, that has not been uh, grafted or domesticated in some way. So I've tried to keep them alive. The problem is my goats like them. I think this is either the second or third time that I have transplanted a bunch of these little trees and I've done everything I can around these trees. Last year, Rhett and I uh, put field fencing around all of them and it, it took them about a day before they pushed through it. I don't want these trees to die. Cedar makes a wonderful jam out of these trees. Uh, they can be used for lots of different things. Uh, they taste wonderful. My kids eat the heck out of them. Uh, it seems that the turkeys and the deer and the wildlife are the ones that scatter these trees around. So you'll find them in the most random places. But historically, they're a plum tree that I think goes back to the south in, in the, the United States. And then as the pioneers would come across, they would throw, throw them along the river, the, the creeks and the river banks and within a year or two, they would produce fairly quickly. And so the next batch of pioneers that may have been coming across uh, would benefit from that. But occasionally you find these older trees. I, I would love it if this was a hundred year old tree. I don't, I don't think it is. But not far from here is the original homestead that's associated with all of this land around here. On that homestead is apple trees that are well over a hundred years old. <laughs> Not far from those apple trees are these, these plum trees. My point is all of the fencing that I have done up to this point on our property is coming out, except for the barbed wire along the sides. All of the chain link across the front, all of the field fence along the side, all of it's going away because it's not goat proof. The chain link is just ugly. Um, I put the chain link up because when we bought this property, Reed was just barely three years old and I was genuinely concerned that he could find his way down to the creek. And we've had years, this time of year, where that creek is 20 feet across and it's so loud that I couldn't, I couldn't record what I'm recording now uh, because it, it would be overbearing. Um, now that Reed is older, um, I'm not as concerned about a, a small child getting down there, although at some point we'll have grandkids up here, I suppose. But more than anything, the chain link was used. It was at the scrap yard. It was cheap. All that's coming out this year. We're replacing it with goat fencing. This is a product that's made by a few different companies, but it's about 48 inches tall. It's small at the bottom. It gets progressively bigger. It looks like a field fence. I like that it's small down low because it can keep the chickens, hopefully on that side of the fence as well. The ch chickens basically wander where they want to wander. Right now, I need to get be before the uh, Potawatomi trees that are still left start to bud out, I need to get them protected from the goats. The goal is to keep the goats on that side of the fence until we get all the rest of the fencing done around here. And then the long-term goal is to have 
four or five little uh, pastures that we can turn the goats out in as they chew the grass down. So my project for today is to try and get this, you know, 80 foot section of fence up and see if it keeps the goats in. We as a family have been talking about a pool table since we got the shop dried in. And I've been looking for a very particular pool table. And let me tell you first and foremost, this isn't it. I've been trying to find a Brunswick gold crown pool table that's somewhat close to us, and so far this hasn't happened. But a couple of weeks ago, someone right close by had a circa 1970s Brunswick home edition pool table for sale, and I decided it was time to stop talking about the pool table and give the kids something fun to do out in the shop. I went and looked at the pool table and truthfully, it wasn't worth half of what I paid for it. But again, it was close by and it was in pretty good condition other than the fact that it needed new felt. I brought the pool table home, set the pool table up, ordered new felt, and in the meantime, even without felt, the kids would spend every afternoon out in the shop trying to figure the game of pool out. A few days ago, the felt showed up. I worked late getting it finished up because I could see just how much they wanted to play pool. And now that the table's back together, it's not what I wish it was, but already we've had hours of fun playing pool as a family. Next week, the plan is to get up to the off-grid cabin, get the board and batten finished on the outside. And while I'm waiting for the final 10 to 12 inches of snow to go away, get a few other smaller projects down around the place before we start on one of the bigger projects that I've been looking forward to doing all winter.
Callie and Reed have been waiting for me to get this pool table put back together. I picked it up a week and a half ago. Uh, it's not the pool table I want. I'm still trying to find a Brunswick gold crown. This is a 1970 Brunswick home something or other. It's good for basically firewood and that's about it. But Callie and Reed will have a good time playing around with it until I can find the pool table I want. It's back together. The felt that is on it is not a fast felt. So it, it'll be fun for them. An opportunity for them to learn a little bit of geometry.